Hello, crypto people. Joey here from the Chart Guys. I've been trading full time for seven years, learning under Dan for six of them, and we have got some excitement in the crypto space. What was looking like new all time highs just a couple hours ago is now a big old smackdown from bears. And you know, on Coinbase, we did get new all time highs, but on Binance, it was the, the perfect double top right at 69K clean. So whether you want to say all-time highs without follow-through or a double top at all-time highs, it really doesn't matter in the scheme of things because what we've been talking about for a couple weeks now all still remains the same. We've been saying there's no daily consolidation shaping up without losing the 4-hour 12 EMA. We've now lost that 4-hour 12 EMA, and bears are in striking distance of getting daily consolidation underway. If that happens, as long as we hold the daily 12 EMA, then the weekly remains strong. The daily 12 EMA would need to be lost to see some weekly consolidation. And again, it would not be shocking to see some weekly consolidation. Bulls have gone up at this point 78%, almost 79 from our last weekly higher low. So while everybody wants it to go up and blast to 100K, 200K and onward, consolidation is part of a healthy chart. And now there are some potential buying opportunities. So next one that we're looking at is hourly oversold conditions. We've been talking about back burners the whole way up. They've been hitting the whole way up. First the five minutes hit, then the 15 minutes hit, and now we're on to the hourly. So that is currently down around 62.3K. So that being said, I am actually making a play right now on IBIT. After this strong 15 minute bounce, looking for a 15 minute higher low. And obviously it's not looking that great right now. Way more retrace than bulls would want to see. We've, we've got the zoom out game on the way up for this bounce. It was five minute 12 EMA acting as resistance the whole way down. We know that once you get through that, you zoom out to the 15 minute, look for resistance. That marked our lower high, very clean. And what bulls needed to see from there to get an hourly bounce underway, which it could still happen, but the odds have decreased with the depth of this pullback as bulls need to see the 15 minute uptrend and to get over the 15 minute 12 EMA. So I'm using IBIT. I got to actually keep an eye on this, uh, keep an eye on this a little bit here. So I'm using IBIT. Let me go to that chart just so I can kind of game plan for myself. My average is 36.62. Got to stop below the low. Scaled in on this, ended up taking half at my break even at 38.62. And if we can bounce back up to the 15 minute 12 EMA, I would take half of the remaining and then have a risk free stop below the low. But I actually might not even need to get all the way there. Let me figure this out real quick, y'all, and then we'll get back into it. So if my stops like there, need to get the one to one. Yeah, I pretty much got to get to the 15 minute 12 EMA to, to get risk free on this unless I'm taking off more than what I have remaining but I'm down with the initial risk and well aware that hourly oversold conditions um, is really the next target so it was just this bounce size that had me thinking you know the most likely scenario is a 15 minute higher low if we're not going to see our most likely scenario what's often going to be there increasing bear volume so we'll go back to Bitcoin and look at that volume you can see the increasing bear volume on the way down so Anytime you're not going to see your most likely scenario, that's often going to be there. So at this point, we'll say bears are in full short-term control as long as 15 minute 12 EMA is resistance. And let's talk about daily consolidation. What do bears need to see to get daily consolidation underway with confidence? They need to confirm a four hour downtrend. There's now a lot of room for a four hour lower high compared to 69K. And if they can do that, then That'll be a point in their book, but it'll just be daily consolidation. We haven't had notable daily consolidation since back at, at in the 50 thousands at this point. So let's see, daily 12 EMA sitting around 60,400. And we'll just keep eyes on this as we look to see, you know, what do we have here? At this point, it's not shocking. It's not anything extreme. But we got to continue to evaluate to see if it remains that way, because we know a bunch of people are leveraged up up here. And we know it wouldn't be shocking to see like a solid liquidation flush 
on Bitcoin because we've just been going straight up for quite some time at this point. And that's very often how these crypto bull moves end. And to talk about what we were talking about last stream, you know, is the LTC move and the meme coin moves, is that dash to trash? Kind of starting to look like it a little bit more here. So if you didn't watch the stream yesterday, go back and watch that. And we can see that our meme coins are the ones getting the hardest, getting hit the hardest off of the top here. So that's not a great look for the crypto space. But what is a great look is we've got plenty of alts that are still strong here. When, when things grow to be really dire in the space, we will see almost nobody surviving the downside at this point. You've got alts V-shaping up to new highs. Not all of the alts, but plenty of alts are still doing decent here and seeing much better bounces than Bitcoin. And we can look at even like Ethereum you know, much better bounce than Bitcoin initially, holding above support by a good bit more. And ultimately, that's because we've got Bitcoin dominance seeing a solid drop here. So this is what alt bulls want to see, but they also want to see Bitcoin not get like smoked smoked. They, I mean, Bitcoin consolidation is inevitable. And as long as it remains healthy and rotation continues through the space, then there's no reason to, to panic at this point. Uh, but we'll have to continue to evaluate. Next thing we'll be watching is can bears confirm a four hour downtrend on Bitcoin next four hour bounce? Because another way this could play out, let's, let's mark up our hourly oversold and get that line on there. So another way this could play out, get this on there. So Mark it up, come on, letters, hourly oversold. So say we continue down from here. We hit hourly oversold and then see a very strong bounce from there, retracing more than half of the move down. So say we come on down, then we see a, a big old bounce from hourly oversold conditions. If we retrace more than half of this move down, then that decreases the odds that bears can do that and increases the odds that bulls can regain a four hour uptrend and keep the show on the road. So that's what we're looking at here on Bitcoin. Obviously, you know, it's never fun to go down if you're a bull, but we got to respect that it's, it's part of a healthy chart. It's part of healthy price movement as long as it stays healthy. If we were to just waterfall down through the daily 12 EMA from here, then we would be saying, okay, this is uh, more firmly dash to trash and we got weekly consolidation underway but this is the beauty of being an up to uptrends on all time frames because even if we lose the daily 12 ema we see weekly consolidation weekly 12 ema 21 percent away at this point and let's see 27 percent off of the highs if if this chart holds the 12 ema then bulls are fine bigger picture and this chart if we look at it you know, it's not wildly different from this chart, looking at the daily, the how these 12 EMAs play in. And that's not wildly different from this chart, which we were watching with the four hour. So it's all about what time frame you care about. And you've got to make sure that you're prepared to handle things that happen on other time frames. So like this attempt at the 15 minute higher low. Let's see, I'm close to stopping out here. Got a little bit of wiggle room below the low, but no dice stop out and then maybe make another attempt at hourly oversold or something like that. The last thing you want to do, all right, yeah, there's the stop on it. And we'll see what kind of follow through we get. But the last thing that you want to do is just scale in to what ends up being a, a top. Let, let's see if I end up just stopping the low on this. It actually happened the other day to me. Let's see, do I want to just hop back in and give it another little crack here? I do. I do. So I'm back in when I stopped out and we'll see if that's just a little lower low without follow through. Pretty solid volume, pretty solid spring back on that. And yeah, we'll see what we get going. I'll just kind of let that be for a moment. Let me set an alert. I'll do five minute 12 EMA. Setting an alert, five minute 12 EMA. So I can be notified. I'd probably take some more off if we if we get back up to that. 
if we get back up to that. And basically the reason I re-entered is if bears are really meaning something with this next leg down, then they will see follow through on it. You're not gonna break the support. Let's drop the line here and then look at that support break. You, you pop below support on high volume and then you start to get a high volume snap back up. I don't know, doesn't, doesn't mean that this is gonna stick and this is the start of the hourly bounce, but it's enough for me to, to risk you know half a percent back down there and it's not like I'm all in on my account or anything like that. So just looking to see if we can get some type of bounce. Playing bounces is my specialty, so environments like this is typically where I thrive. So let's see, yeah, we'll just leave that. We don't need to continue to watch it. Let's move through the list, starting with ETH BTC. So again, if you didn't watch yesterday's stream, go back and watch it. We were talking about the potential of this daily bear flag confirming without follow through because of our larger time frame context that we're looking for a higher low. And you will see that happen often, that a flag confirming without follow through marks your pivot on the larger time frame. So we continue to tighten up here on ETH BTC in the direction this range breaks will be critical in terms of the relative strength of ETH. So with this, we've got ETH much stronger here on the day, bigger picture, it's still gonna be about our 12 hour 12 EMA. Nothing is changing in that regard. And 12 hour consolidation underway, anything over 33.63 gonna be a 12 hour higher low. Bulls hold the 12 EMA, then the show goes on. If we lose the daily or the 12 hour 12 EMA, we're zooming out to the daily 12 EMA, looking for an hourly oversold back burner. Same deal as Bitcoin here. And actually to, to note Bitcoin, We've got bulls trying to hold the 12 hour 12 EMA here. We're not riding the 12 hour 12 EMA, so I wouldn't call it a, a 12 hour 12 EMA rider or anything like that, but just noting that it is in play here. And you'll often on 24 hour traded assets, specifically crypto, it's not uncommon to see the 12 hour step in before the daily, but I, I personally don't really care much about the 12 hour here, just noting it just noting it. So let's look at ETH and break down what we've got going on. So still holding 15 minute support, whereas Bitcoin has gone to lower lows, but deep enough pullback at this point that we're looking for a 15 minute lower high compared to 36.90 here. So what do we got on the four hour? So straight off the top on the four hour, but anything over 34.62, gonna be a four hour higher low and bulls with a lot of space still for that. So 15 minute downtrend gonna be the guide for four hour consolidation as we look to see where can bulls step in. Let's see where our hourly back burner would be here. So hourly back burner on ETH is 34.73. And again, just with this context, knowing that we pretty much have textbook dash to trash and now seeing the first little sign that that may be what's playing out. You, you gotta, it's, you gotta be protective playing these back burners. I would not advise just scaling on in because you know some people that high risk high reward approach is their specialty, and I certainly do that in certain environments as well. But just in this context, I don't know. My gut's telling me that you know it would not be surprising to see that over leveraged long liquidation flush. And if that happens, you don't wanna be scaling in for it. I would so much rather take multiple attempts at something just like this Bitcoin here, you know, I stopped out on new lows, even though after scaling in and taking half profit, it was like, I don't know, a 15% day loser or something, very small. But I still stopped out because I don't know, I don't wanna get caught up in a liquidation flush in this context, because another way to look at it, you know, we're talking about the double top on Binance, but if you look at Coinbase, it's a all time high without follow through into a violent smackdown. So, you know, that's just not a great look for bulls um, in, in the short term. Again, bigger picture, bulls are chilling for now. We gotta go step by step, but wouldn't be shocked at all 
for for Payne to hit longs who have just initiated up here. Obviously, people who initiated long ago are not worried about anything because it's not even daily consolidation, and we've just been on this tear. But if, if you've got poor positioning, you're starting to sweat here at this point as we near 10% off of the top. So with that, I encourage people to find a level to play off of, wait for a one minute trend change, one minute stair step, five minute stair step, something like that. Throw your hat in the fire, have a stop lock level that you're playing off of, and then you know go from there. So it looks like that was not a lower low without follow through on Bitcoin. And now we're looking down to hourly oversold conditions as the next spot. Let's go back to our Binance chart for that. It's going to be coming in quick here. Uh, yeah, so this is the hourly back burner. Let's see, have we actually hit it yet? So hourly, not quite yet. Not quite yet, close. Perhaps bulls will try to front run. And we'll see, but it's just about the 15 minute downtrend. And here's the thing too, you don't need to nail the bottom on these back burners to give it a go. Say we hit hourly oversold, we see another nice 15 minute bounce, you can try to fish a 15 minute higher low again, just like I did here. If it fails, you stop out and you move on, no skin off your back, and that is that. So let's see, I'm going to hide my broker so I can look back at the chat here. So I can look back at the chat, make sure I don't have like no volume on or something like that. Seems that volume is coming through. I did that my first stream and like, it's always like on the back of my mind that like, holy crap. Um, maybe I did that again. So we have now hit hourly oversold. I wonder, do I want to make another shot at it? I might try another one on this one minute stair step. If we get a decent sized candle to play off of. Hold on a moment. Yeah, we'll let it be. We'll keep an eye on it. We'll keep an eye on it. I, I'm definitely interested in playing this back burner for a day trade via IBIT. And let me see. Yeah, I guess I'm at like a 35% day loser or something like that. So definitely have risk allotted still for it. I don't really like that one minute stair step with how big this candle is, but we'll see if it goes from there. It'll be a bit of a bummer if it does. All right. I'm going to keep an eye on that on my side screen and we'll keep moving through the list here. We'll keep moving through the list, maybe a one minute higher low. Hopefully we don't just V-shape from here. All right, so that's what we're looking for on ETH. Bulls did go to the lower lows here, joining Bitcoin, 15 minute downtrend, going to be the guide. So LTC, we have got daily consolidation underway. It'll be healthy if daily 12 EMA is held as support. And that is that. We have hit our hourly back burner and we are going to lower lows. So that was the hourly back burner, that first bounce. I guess we can't say we actually are going to lower lows because we technically didn't get the hourly bounce underway. But Bull's going to need to regain a four hour uptrend on LTC USD if we are to see a daily higher low shape up. And what's our weekly looking like at this point? Lots of week left, so not going to fret too much about the shape of the weekly candle right now. We'll just stick with the daily, daily 12 EMA, and that's going to be our guide here. That's going to be our guide here. So it looks like Bitcoin is rejecting from the 1 minute 12 EMA. Perhaps another bottom fish. Let me set this up. And, and basically my, my mindset with these is, you know, two attempts right now at like a, you know, 35, 40% day loser or whatever, you know, if, if one sticks, it should be like a week maker or something like that. So I'm very down to take multiple 
low risk attempts and then when you get one to stick it makes up for the others now it's worth noting that i'm doing this on ibit because there's no fees so that makes it a game changer because if you're trying to do this on coinbase then you do ultimately end up getting chewed apart with the fees live um i don't know why i said live i'm trying to get in this trade see it potentially go i might just get a little tiny nibble yeah i'm just gonna get some exposure at a size that i'm i'm willing to i'm hoping to add back down here to it but if we just go you know a little distracted on the stream <clears throat> and I don't want to miss it so just got a little bit and I'll click in my other orders here so we can stop fussing around so we can stop fussing around yeah I'll just kind of scale into a one minute higher low and put a stop below the low those get filled All right, so that's LTC USD. Let's look at LTC BTC. So we have bulls still kind of struggling to shape up a daily high or low. We had a few days of nice relative strength and nothing really going on here now. Four hour lower high set. Bulls need to regain a four hour uptrend if we're going to get a daily higher low set on LTC BTC. And then we'd look for a daily lower high compared to 1528. And remember, bigger picture, LTC BTC or LTC USD remains a turd as long as weekly 12 EMA is acting as resistance. So Seoul holding on pretty decent here. We are, well, we're holding on decent, but we have confirmed a daily bull flag without follow through at this point. So could that be a sign that some weekly consolidation is shaping up? Possibly. If that's going to be the case, bears need to take out daily higher low support of 124.17, and that's that. That's what we're that's what we're looking at here. All right, let's see. I did get filled for that one minute higher low position. If I get my stop in place for the right amount of shares, and yeah, we'll look and see if. Bulls can get a one minute uptrend as step one of trying to get an hourly bounce underway on Bitcoin. So I'm going to set an alert right there to be notified if we go to lower lows and ensure that my broker has filled my stop. And I'll set one there to let me know if we're getting some bounce going and have me looking to potentially take some partial profit or something like that. All right, what else we got on the list? So INJ, very weak in the short term here. It's looking like bulls were shaping up a daily high or low. I mean, they technically did with the break of the high of yesterday, but no follow through on that at this point. No follow through on that at this point and really a lack of clarity. This is, this is kind of tough to make sense of what we've got going on. We're just water falling off of this strong 15 minute bounce. So seeing a good number of less likely scenarios playing on out here and you know it's accompanied with volume you would anticipate after a bounce like that that you don't come back to the low and then after a bounce like that that you don't come back to the low so this is definitely a high volatility and difficult environment like if you are not a seasoned trader who is comfortable in volatility and is comfortable in like short-term fear then you know you're probably just watching at this point last thing you want to do is is get into the high octane action when your skill set is not developed for it. But to talk about that, to develop that skill set, you do need to get in there to some degree. So I do encourage like, you know, very small position sizing and get in there. So like, even if you totally F it up, you know, you're losing 50 bucks or something like that, where it's, it's not a big deal. Um, so yeah, it's you got to start somewhere. And I, I talk about this in regards to broad market data reactions, um, because now those are among my favorite days, like CPI, FOMC, PPI, all that, PCE. And it took multiple years of just watching the data. I didn't make a single trade, just watched. And then 
After that, it was like starting with one share or one micro contract. And now these data days, I, I anticipate to make a week maker plus on them because it, I, over multiple years, I've developed the skill set for it. And how I, the, the analogy I like to use for it is that uh, it's kind of like if you're playing baseball, you know, whether you're hitting the ball off of a tee or you're getting a slow pitch thrown at you underhand or you're hitting an MLB 100 mile an hour fastball ball, your swing is gonna be the same, but your anticipation is different between those. So in trading, whether you're playing the daily time frame and weekly time frame, like swing trading, your, your techniques, your executions are gonna be the same as if you're playing a one minute time frame. But on a one minute time frame, your anticipation your execution, all of that needs to be much quicker. Um, so, and then you talk about FOMC or price action like this, it needs, needs to be even the next degree quicker for that stuff. So there's no rush to get there and you gotta build up little by little. Like if you're trying to become a pro baseball player, they don't just start pitching you the heat at 12 years old and say, you know, you'll figure it out soon enough. No, it's it it's a slow and steady process to build up that skill set. So let's see, let's look at some strong names here. We've got OP, and we are up in blue skies, new blue skies here today, daily higher low set at 369.8, and bulls are in control as long as this daily uptrend is intact. We've got four hour consolidation underway. Anything over, we'll just say anything over 375.7 is gonna be a four hour higher low. And that's that. Let's look at our 15 minute trend. So 15 minute equilibrium, low, high, higher, low, lower, high, and we're testing support here. If this breaks bare, we'll have deeper 15 minute consolidation or deeper four hour consolidation. If it breaks bull, then that four hour higher low is set. Let's check back in on um, Bitcoin. Looks like we're trying to get some bounce underway here. Not much follow through at this point. Let's see, wonder. Now I can't quite be risk-free on this next attempt. We'll just kind of let it be. Honestly, with the stop as close as it is, I'm pretty okay assuming the, the risk for what it is and would rather, rather than prioritizing getting risk-free as soon as possible in this context, I'm kind of trying to hold on to a, a bit more of the position for longer. So we'll see, we'll see, hindsight will tell what's the right decision on it. Um, yeah, hindsight will tell what's the right decision. Where would I wanna take profits? If we get to five minute 12 EMA, I would take some profits and if not, just let it be here. Let it be here and take another small loss and then keep on keeping on. So let's see, let's go look at the meme coins. Let's look at the meme coins because they got smoked today. And this is the crazy thing. High to low, 31% on Pepe still hasn't seen daily consolidation. So we have got a little dinky four hour downtrend confirmed that increases the odds that daily consolidation will take place from here, but we're going to need to break the daily stair step. And then aggressive bulls will be watching hourly oversold back burner here, currently slated for 537. We'll have to see you know what this how this line progresses as we get down towards it let's look at doge so we had or no let's look at shib first shib we had four hour 12 ema support for quite a while here good week and we've now lost it so that is the first sign that we've got a momentum shift that we're going to have some daily consolidation underway and certainly looking like a daily volume climax so hourly oversold is our next target here and that's all the way down at 23.98 down at 23.98 and let's see 15 minute 12 ema resistance same as bitcoin here a little bit of relative strength coming in after relative weakness off the top and you know the meme coins topped last night but a little bit of relative weakness down but some relative strength at this point not going to lower lows while bitcoin is bulls got to reclaim a 15 minute uptrend to get an hourly bounce underway, and then anything under 44, gonna be an hourly lower high. Gotta regain an hourly uptrend to try to get a four hour bounce underway 
in this context at the moment. So that's SHIB Doge, much weaker here. Uh, let's let's check percentages off the top. So we got 26 on Doge. SHIB's probably a bigger percentage, but structurally it's holding on better. Yeah, 37 on SHIB. So looking at Doge, do we have our daily consolidation underway? Not yet. Hello, little Doge dog. So not yet. We don't have our daily consolidation underway. We do have a four hour downtrend that increases the odds that daily consolidation is coming. And that is that. So anything below 19.2, it's going to be a four hour lower high next bounce. And we're just looking to see, can daily consolidation be healthier? Is this like, you know, if this is dash to trash, then these trash names may not see these prices for another year or something like that. You know, I'm not a... I'm not a predictor, as y'all know, but it's, uh, we, as, I don't remember what stream it was, pretty recently, someone was like, you know, what's the best meme coin to invest in? And my answer is none of them, because when we see more notable consolidation in the space, these are surely fixed to get hit hard. So that is what that is. Let's look at Pepe. So Pepe coming off of all-time highs, similar to Doge and SHIB, that big pullback off the top, but no daily consolidation yet. Do we have our four-hour downtrend here? It's dinky, but it is still there. And let's see, looks like maybe six-hour or eight-hour, 12 EMA we've been riding. Yeah, we'll call it the eight-hour, and we're coming down and testing it. So while it's a big pullback off the top, if bulls show up here, this chart is fine. This chart is fine. And these EMA riders, it can feel dire when you're coming down into them. But, you know, if you hold them and keep on going, then you hold them and you keep on going. And it's not a big deal. So keeping eyes on that 8-hour 12 EMA there. Let's see. Who's, who's getting... Who's doing great? We had Theta is very strong here today. Another 8-hour 12 EMA rider. This was one of our coins coming out of the big old basing pattern, saw a huge follow through. So bulls are looking for an eight hour higher low off the eight hour 12 EMA. And what kind of structure do we have for the move down? This an hourly downtrend that we'll be watching here, but definitely has relative strength today. In the short term, I would say it also has relative strength. Like if we look at this and then you look at what Bitcoin pulled off here, you know, it's you know, Theta is hardly seeing it, hardly seeing it at all. So when Bitcoin gets a bottom in, these alts that are holding on well are positioned well to see continued upside. And as lo again, I'll keep repeating it, as long as we're seeing rotation in the space, then the overall space is decently healthy. Um, there's there's like a time in 2021 where basically everybody was getting smoked except for AXS. That's kind of the exception there where it's like, you know, you couldn't say the space was healthy, even though we did have rotation, but it was like money out of everything else into only AXS. So, you know, that's not the kind of like rotation that you want to see for a healthy space. The rotation you want to see for a healthy space is when you look through your alt list and you've got a handful of, of green names out there with it. So let's see, looks like no dice on the Bitcoin third attempt as we go to lower lows. Let me ensure that I've stopped out here. I have, and I'll just leave that be for now and focus on the stream. Uh, and, and probably I'm not gonna stream a whole ton longer because I got a chart guy stream at 315 for the members. But yeah, bears maintaining control here on Bitcoin. Five minute downtrend in the short term, 15 minute downtrend, bigger picture. And we're in that hourly back burner zone. So we'll see if bulls can show on up for something or if this ends up being just a full blown blow off top. So daily consolidation is officially underway. And if bulls hold daily 12 EMA, it remains healthy. If they do not, then we got weekly consolidation shaping up. And I know no one wants to see that or hear that or whatever, but it's part of a healthy chart as long as it stays healthy. You don't, you don't go straight up. You don't go straight down. You get the ebbs and flows along the way. All right, let's check in on FET. 
So FET getting some daily consolidation underway. And is this a 12 hour 12 EMA rider? I think, yep. So coming down into that 12 hour 12 EMA. And like these are the types of names that you'll want to be looking for on a Bitcoin bounce. You know, I mean, you can certainly play Bitcoin if you want, but you can have the wind at your back if you're playing an alt that has relative strength, that has a BTC pairing that is strong and in uptrends and has something like this where you've got a clear EMA rider. So let's see what FET's looking like down into that pretty solid flush here into it. You know, maybe that's like the type of thing where you get a two minute, one minute stair step into the larger time frame EMA, you get risk free, you see if it sticks and then just go from there. All right, that's about all I wanna look at. Or let's see ADA, I guess, getting just daily consolidation. You know, we've got some big percentages here, but just daily consolidation. And the space has been so volatile that daily consolidation is kind of a extreme thing, percentage-wise at this point. All right, let's go through the chat. Jahan Zeeb, hello, hello. I'm doing just fine, man. How are you? Hope you're well. Revy, what up? Let's see. Brandon doesn't want to lose 64-1. Bears go away. Sorry, Brandon, it's gone. It is gone. Daily consolidation is underway. Let's see. Brett shorted the tippy top. Very nice, sir. Chris Shermer's looking for hourly oversold. Let's see. We've got some more alerts going off. What are these? Oh, 2% down in one five minute bar. Pretty good flush here on Bitcoin. And that's why you stop out of your stuff. You know, I made the one little, come on, trading view, one little one minute higher low attempt here and, you know, stop out and you get to avoid all that and if i'm not streaming then i'm continuing to crack off shots at this but um, at this point i think i'm at uh let me see here maybe a 60 percent day loser actually need to figure this out because again i want to get this dip i want to try a yeah, I'm at like a 60% day loser, so I'm not going to crack off anymore in the stream because I won't, I need to focus up. I need to focus up for that because if I hit a day loser, then I'm not I'm going to stop trying for it. I don't want to I don't want to blow my wad kind of half-assing it on the stream. I'm not half-assing it, but doing it distracted. Doing it distracted. All right, Sebastian, greetings from Mexico. Hello, hello. Ryan V, Sucker Punch, after just the tip. That is right. Got just a slight new all-time high on Coinbase, double top on Binance, and now the Sucker Punch. So again, what we talked about in the beginning, what happens on the four-hour next bounce is going to be crucial. Do we bounce big enough to regain a four-hour uptrend and say, Bears didn't have anything on the sucker punch, or do we confirm a four hour downtrend and lose the daily 12 EMA? That's when um, that's when we start to say, okay, maybe, maybe this is a little different. To what degree is this dash to trash gonna play out? We don't know at this point. We, we don't know. We do know daily consolidation's underway. We do know that's not shocking. We do know weekly consolidation won't be shocking. But, you know, is this going to end up being monthly consolidation? I don't know. I'll have to stay tuned and take it one day at a time. Let's see. Let's take a look at Phil. For, who's that? Crypto Moods. So Phil, daily consolidation underway. Daily 12 EMA rider. Daily 12 EMA coming into play. Hourly oversold. So looking for a bounce there, but don't got to nail the bottom to capitalize on that. Don't gotta nail the bottom to capitalize on it. Probably got 15 minute 12 EMA resistance in the short term and bulls aren't going anywhere without getting up and over that. Bulls ain't going anywhere without getting up and over that. Let's see, Cherry Tomato Boy knows what's up. Smash that like button please. Thank you, please and thank you. Let's see, 62 tests and flush long alts. Yeah, let's see. So FET, that was a pretty solid 
kind of liquidation style candle there in the five minute. Is anybody else getting that? Yeah, lots of alts have, have that big old five minute candle. Any alts that any alt that is holding the low has relative strength. Looking at wild, holding the 11 a.m. low, relative strength compared to peers. You can kind of just click through TIA, relative strength compared to peers. And TIA, still trying to get its poop in a group, huh? Looking for the weekly higher low, testing weekly 12 EMA. And you got to break daily, oh, did break daily lower highs. Hmm, what are we using here? I guess two day. Yeah, we'll say we got to break two day lower highs at this point if this thing's going to come back to life. We do have relative strength here today, TIA, BTC. But if we look at our ratio watch list, like since we've got Bitcoin dominance going down, that's leading to this ratio watch list being uh, very green for most names. You got a few turds down at the bottom doing weaker than BTC on a day where Bitcoin dominance is dropping. But most alts are doing better here. Most alts are doing better here. That doesn't necessarily mean they're going up. I think OP, pretty much the only one that was like going up when everybody else was going down. That's not the watch list I want. Uh, but you know, most other people have some red out here. And by people, I mean coins. And the reason I say that is because I spend my whole life doing this and the charts end up being my friends because I'm a nerd. All right, let's go through looking at ARB for interfans. ARB, still not doing a lot. I mean, ARB is pretty much the same programming that we were doing on INJ a few weeks ago where it's just like we're in this kind of sloppy sideways range and nothing changes until until that changes. Uh, if we go back and look at INJ sideways range and, and ultimately still in it, it did pop to new highs, but you, know, you got bears playing short off the highs, bulls playing long off the lows, and that's pretty much just the gig. That's pretty much just the gig on something like that. Let's see, Jules Ahabar, not touching BTC till daily oversold. Yeah, that'll daily oversold on Bitcoin. Likely going to be a good buy. Let's just let's see where that's at right now. And this would move up a big, a good bit, but you know, 35k. How this RSI projector tool works is that's if you get there on this current candle, which obviously uh, something extreme would need to happen for that, something unprecedented. Uh, so as price comes down, this would walk up, and I'd estimate you know it'd probably be somewhere you know in the low 40k's if this were to be like a top being set right now, but monthly 12 EMA going to be the guide for the monthly time frame in terms of health. If we hold monthly 12 EMA, then it's healthy. And, and what bulls want to see, and again, if you haven't listened to yesterday's stream, go back and listen. And, and we actually kind of are getting two versions of it because what I was saying was you don't want to go to all time highs right from here because it's not an environment conducive for follow through because we're overbought on all of these time frames and that's just how it works when you're it's it's like if you've got to run through a brick wall and you're running from a mile back you're gonna be super tired by the time you get to the brick wall and you, even if you do break through you're just gonna be gassed and fall over or, or you're not gonna be able to break through well that's Bitcoin right now running up to all time highs versus if you can chill 30 meters out and then take a run at the wall, that's where you're more likely to get follow through. So this could be a big old cup and handle. Monthly consolidation would be welcome here. Bring in all the bears, um, the, the Brett McLennans of the world to, uh, you know, be all jazzed and, and you know, not, not to, uh, talking smack about your short or anything like that. But if we see weekly consolidation from here, bears will be talking. If we see monthly consolidation from here, bears will be talking. And we have a ton of room for higher lows. And you get all those bears in, you get them all jazzed up, you set a healthy higher low, and then you go back and you confirm the cup and handle into new all-time highs with weekly RSI cooled off, daily RSI cooled off, monthly RSI cooled off. We're in monthly overbought. So... It's consolidation is welcome. It's necessary for healthy price movement because when you don't consolidate, that's when you end up getting like full blown blow off tops. And that's 
not what anybody here wants to see. So I welcome some consolidation. You know, I'm trying to buy the dip right now, but I'm primarily a day trader. So I'm just looking to try to play a play a bounce and cash out before 4 p.m. So um, as far as like bigger picture, as a Bitcoin bull, I welcome this consolidation. Cool everything off, keep the consolidation healthy, then go back up and get to all time highs. All right, what else we got in here? Hola, Karan Bell. Mr. Shermer, active in the chat. Crypto Mood says, irresponsibly long I am. Hopefully not too irresponsibly. You do it will not be shocking in the slightest. If like if if we check in for the stream tomorrow and we're trading at 52k, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. We've got longs leveraged up like mad up here. And you know, they might not get the all-time high ride if we do go to all-time highs um, because they're over-leveraged and being greedy up here and end up getting liquidated. So uh, it's very normal to see all of the over-leveraged longs or over-leveraged shorts get smoked out at some point. So you got to be protective up here. Like, do I do I like stopping out my, my dip play in hourly oversold conditions? No. I think there's a high probability of a bounce soon. I don't like stopping it out there, but what I do like is living to trade another day. And that's one thing that there are very high odds with my discipline and how I run my system that I will always live to trade another day. I've had my run-ins with not stopping stuff out, getting in messed up over leveraged situations. And eventually you just kind of realize that slow and steady wins the race. There's times to be aggressive. There's times to be conservative, but in, in, in this context, you don't want to open yourself up to getting liquidated or giving back half of your profits of the nice bull move up because you're you're getting greedy right below resistance. So there's nothing wrong with stopping out and re-entering. There's nothing wrong with stopping out and re-entering. If you're fretting about the fees, don't fret about the fees. I hate the fees too. You know, I'm primarily a, a index and commodities futures trader. And it sucks that I have to pay fees to do that when I can trade stocks uh, for free. And like I've in, let's see, we're two months and a week into the new year and I've paid $2,200 in, in fees in my futures account. Yeah, it sucks, but I choose just not to think about it because when I'm like adjusting my risk to reward to account for the fees and this and that just throws off my flow. I have accepted it as part of the game it's a necessary evil to trade what I specialize in, and that's that. So, you know, if if you're thinking in crypto, like, oh, I don't want to stop out and, and eat a, a 0.2% um, fee on this through Coinbase or, you know, whatever your volume, uh, whatever your volume tier is, you know, if you've, if you've got to eat that to protect yourself against 10% more downside, then you eat that. So it's, it's, in this game, the the pigs get slaughtered eventually. Very rarely do you get a fat piggy that makes it to the promised land. It happens, but that's lucky. You may as well win a lottery if you're if you're doing that. Because the thing is, most people they do that. They hit that home run. They say, "Oh, I'm a genius. The market's easy. This, that, and the other thing, whatever." And then uh, they try to do it again. And even if they get it again, they say, "Oh, wow, I'm the smartest." Blah blah blah. And all it takes is one time for it not to work that you then liquidate your whole your whole thing. So got to be process based, got to be disciplined and got to understand that at any point it could be your last day to to trade because you liquidate everything and that's why you know again I'm I'm stopping out of this bitcoin bounce play right now because the last thing I want to do is say oh I'll just add a little bit lower you know we're hourly oversold it's a back burner it's a high probability bounce yes that's true but that does not mean that we cannot flush down to 50k here in in three hours i'm not predicting that by any means but anything can happen in the markets at any time and if you don't respect that then the the market will will teach you that lesson whether you learn it or not that's up to you but if you're in the markets long enough you you learn that anything can happen. And that's why we've, our bottom line, our 
It's so much more important to have a high floor than a high ceiling in this game. If you're trying to do it for decades, if you're just still gambling stimulus money from COVID, then you know do whatever you want. It doesn't matter. But if you're trying to make a living doing this, if you're trying to really subsidize other income doing this and looking to do this in the long term, then you gotta you gotta be somewhat responsible. You gotta be somewhat responsible. There's times where I'm irresponsible as well, but the result is not uh, you know me losing everything. The result is me getting kicked in the nuts hard, um, and you know you keel over, you you cry a little bit, and then you get back up and and you're fine in a day. Let's see, Mr. Jonathan Down. Can we have a look at Sui USDT? Sui USDT. What do we got here? We'll zoom out. So Sui, looking for a big old cup and handle. Looking for a big old cup and handle, searching for the weekly higher low. No sign of it yet. We're coming down to support. We had a really nice bounce. Uh, a few days ago, and that was looking like the weekly higher low is shaping up, but you got to get your trend change. No trend change. We're back down to the lows and pretty much back to square one with looking for the weekly higher low. So what do we have in the short term? Yeah. Are, are more alts getting this? Let's take a quick peek around. Yeah, we're starting to get some liquidations here. Starting to get some liquidations here. Not everywhere though. Yeah, we'll see. All right, back to Sui. So if you want to be super aggressive, you know, maybe you're looking at like a one minute stair step or something. Let's see, I got a cat here. Oh, he's going behind the monitor today. Might have to let him out in a second. So one minute 12 EMA in the short term on Sui. A lot of times these Liquics end up marking, and this isn't even necessarily like a full on. No, that's. I'd say that's a liquidation wick. It's not huge, only, 2.82%, but that's pretty good volume there. That is pretty good volume. Wait, okay, well, let's let's zoom out. We'll just go step by step. So one minute 12 EMA, then five minute 12 EMA, then 15 minute 12 EMA, and you gotta regain the uptrends one by one. And it's gonna be all about how aggressive do you wanna be. Most aggressive is doing what I was trying to do on Bitcoin, where it's like, all right, I'm looking for this one minute momentum shift to potentially shift things for us here. Uh, more patient is just waiting for a bounce. Here comes some liquidations. Yeah. Hmm. Here comes some liquidations. Is everybody else getting it? Wonder who's holding on strong. Come on, trading view. Don't do this to me now. <laughs> I wonder if anybody's got relative strength. What what we'll do to find that, we'll go to our BTC ratio list and then just go to the top. I guess it is just gonna be theta. Sushi, look how these ratios changed here though. When we were looking at this five minutes ago, these were mostly all green and now you're getting the alts flushing and, and they're performing worse than Bitcoin. They're performing worse than Bitcoin in, as of 15 minutes ago. So let's see if Bitcoin dominance is starting to bounce. Go to the, yeah, so 15 minutes. So this is this is that alt liquidation coming on here. Bitcoin dominance with a big move up. Let's go back to Sui. Yeah, big old liquid. Hold on a second. I might see if I can't get someone to cover my afternoon stream. Yeah, we're we're seeing some liquidations. Let's go through the list. Just evaluate how everybody's doing. ETH holding on a little bit better here, but from where we started of, oh, ETH is holding on uh, great compared to Bitcoin. Now at this point, huge follow through on the lower lows, 8%. And Bitcoin continuing to flush down. Continuing to flush down. What's Soul doing? Soul, big old flush. Got liquidations pouring through across the space. The most aggressive bulls are 
are looking to play this down, bounce because you're a masochist. Um, but, and the reason people do that is it's the high, highest risk, highest reward. But like, if you nail this bounce, a, a, a move back to the 15 minute 12 EMA is double digit percentages. So when you hone in the skill to be able to do this, then you open yourself up to being able to make really big, really quick gains. So that's the allure to it. But again, it's, it's a specialty tactic in the markets and the highest risk, highest reward. Because say you were scaling in, and this is exactly why I was talking about everything that I was talking about, where I don't want to scale into this stuff. I'd rather take multiple attempts because if you were starting to scale in back here, you, your average might be up in the 120s where you're looking to take profits um, on, on a hopeful bounce. So let's look at these alt liquidations can put in a tent bottom. Everybody's starting to see a pretty solid bounce back up, but it's going to be the same thing. We can't get lost in the sauce on something like this where it's like, Okay, that's a big one minute bounce. Yeah, it is a big one minute bounce, but we got to regain a one minute uptrend. We got to regain a five minute uptrend. We got to get over five minute 12 EMA. We got to get over 15 minute 12 EMA. Ultimately, that's the guide here. So we could have this big flush down and still just set a 15 minute lower high off the 12 EMA and keep the show on the road. So, yeah, aggressive bulls. I would say the context of given that liquidation flush. And given this snap back up, if we don't just V-shape it here, um, because sometimes you'll see that and it doesn't give you a chance to get back in. But another one minute bottom fish, I think, has good probabilities here if we can be so blessed as to get it. I gotta let my cat outside real quick. One second. What's up, baby? Bitcoin's dumping. What you do? All right, let's keep going through the list. Let's see what the meme coins are doing. Are they getting absolutely plastered right now? Oh, no, honestly not. I would have thought they would have had bigger liquids. Who had the biggest? I guess Doge is pretty big. Pepe, decent, but still not uh, Sushi. Pretty solid. Theta, huge after holding on strong. Stronger than everybody else. So we're just getting... Getting smoked, but I would guess temp bottom is in. Um, it's very, when you see these one minute 10% candles, that's it's unsustainable. It's unsustainable. ADA, absolutely smoked. Absolutely smoked. So now at this point, we gotta like go back through and look at all the structural stuff we were talking about because all the alts were hanging on fine. Let's see what FET did. Probably blasted through that 12 hour 12 EMA. Yep, blasted through it and right through the daily 12 EMA. So odds increasing of, of weekly consolidation everywhere with this wick. But it's still going to be the same thing that we talked about earlier. What happens the next four hour bounce? Because let's zoom out on Bitcoin. It's obviously a big red day. We've now lost our little dinky daily higher low. Oh, is that the daily 12 EMA? Yeah, dang it. Yeah, so that's that's the buy zone, the daily 12 EMA. So that increases the odds of a one minute higher low being a high probability play here. If we just V shape up, then it'll be the five minute higher low. You know, this again, the smaller the time frame, the more aggressive that you're that you're being with it. So bulls. Yeah, that's a good move up off of that. That was a good move up off of that. So bulls that were looking to buy the dips that weren't aggro enough to be scaling into it are, are playing off of these lows at this point because those are full-blown liquidation wicks across the space. Wow, LTC got smoked. So look at that. So the whole dash to trash thing from yesterday, I guess it ended up playing out pretty good here, huh? I guess it ended up playing out pretty good here, huh? All right, let's get back into the chat here. What the heck is everybody saying? Um, I got I got a stream for the chart guys soon. I'd rather probably stay on here and chat with y'all. 
but thus is life. Thus is life. And no, again, I know I keep talking about the last stream. Go back and watch the last stream if you didn't watch it, because everything's playing out pretty nicely. It's always nice when that happens. It's always nice when that happens. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't have time for, oh, I do have time for something. ICP, we got our bull break, but now getting smacked back down. So we were talking about it yesterday, about how the bull break's favored as long as we continue to see rotation. It's the same thing. This soul, same thing as I, uh, INJ. Got the bull break, and now it's actually even more similar to INJ, because INJ got the bull break and came back down. Um, but yeah, ICP was holding on strong. ICP was holding on strong. But that liquid changed everything. It's probably just a few one minute candles, 15% in five minutes. Spicy. That is spicy. Doge, nice recovery. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna send another message here. Send another message because I'd probably rather stay here and talk through this conversation than talk about the Dow Jones. Who cares about the Dow Jones? The Dow sucks. You know that ETF, they based exposure based on the share price of a stock. So if you have like a stock that's doing great and you, you have a split, then uh, you lose your exposure. And it's not based on market cap. It's based on stock price. Crazy. That's some, that's some boomer stuff. All right, Bitcoin seeing some continuation of this five minute bounce coming up into five minute 12 EMA. Got to get a five minute trend change is step one to shifting this. And then same thing continues. It'll be all about the 15 minute and a 15 minute trend change and all of that. Let's see if the broad market put in a bottom. It was pretty bearish today. Yeah, no bottom there yet. So everything's kind of coming down. Dan's been watching out for semiconductors to potentially top out with Bitcoin. No, no such thing at this point. All right, let's just, we'll just click down the list, see how everything's going. It's looking like I am going to have to do the chart guys stream. Everybody is quiet. I'm going to delete my message of a request and we'll just do that. I'll, I'll talk right up into it and just switch over to the chart guys stream. Let me put a message in chat that the links come in late. All right. So now we can, same way we were evaluating relative strength and weakness on the pullback of who's still holding the support, who's now lost the support. We can be evaluating strength on the bounce as, uh, Who's up and over five minute 12 EMA at this point? We got Bitcoin pushing up and over, a little bit of relative strength there. ETH, lower, a little bit of relative weakness. LTC, much lower, that much weaker. Soul, hmm. Soul is still below, so it's weak, but that move down was, was much larger than Pierce. 17% on the bounce. Good heavens, volatility is out right now. Good heavens, volatility is out. INJ, good bit weaker, not even close to that five minute 12 EMA. And that is that. Let's see, I got some messages in the chart guys coming in. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to wrap it up here and do the afternoon stream there. We'll we'll hop back on tomorrow to check in on the action and stay safe out there. If you're playing the dips, bulls are looking for higher lows. This has got to be the low right now. Like if this liquidation low is not the low, then then that's not good. That's not good. Big time alt bounces on that lick flush. 20%. Crazy. All right, y'all. Thank you for tuning in. 
We got 366 people in here and 108 likes. If you can hit the like button, I would appreciate it. Dan, the whole truck guys team would appreciate it. Helps the algos, helps us uh, get the info to more people. If you're not subscribed and you wanna learn more about the charts, and not just the charts, but the psychology behind all of this, um, which is the toughest part. You know, the curriculum of learning the TA is, it's not easy, but it's not rocket science. Um, so if you want to learn about all that stuff, hit subscribe, join, uh, or, you know, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you hate it, then you can unsubscribe. So thank you all for tuning on in, and I will see you soon as we check out what is to come. Farewell all. Thanks again for spending some of your afternoon with me.